Okay, so let me talk about um, this next topic, right? So, which is something that's not too difficult to understand. Right? Um, to some extent, we already covered many of this. Uh, let's talk about these axioms and also theorems of Boolean algebra. Really, axioms means the statements that are assumed to be true, right, in this system. Right? Everything is true, but that's basically how the system is defined. And in many cases, you guys may see this uh, interesting duality effect or principle of duality. Right. So in many cases, we just interchange zero and one and n or, so we may still have you know, a good axiom or a good theorem. To some extent, you know, this uh, mean term maximum, they have this uh, duality right, form. First, let's look at um, you know, some of the very basic axioms. Right? Uh, you know, we only have a few of them. First one is, you know, if x is a zero, then um, right, if uh, it's really the, then x cannot be one, okay? So basically this is a binary, binary uh, variable, can only be zero, one. And the second axiom is saying that, right, if x is a zero, then x not is a one, okay? So basically this is the definition of the, the not gate. And we have three more axioms. So these are basically the definition of and and or, okay? As simple as this, All right? So A3, A4, A5, these are about the definition of and, and A3 prime, this is the dual form. A3 prime, A4 prime, A5 prime, these are about the or gate, okay? Any question about this? Right? If not, um, you know, interestingly, that's it, right? So these are the, the five important axioms of Boolean algebra. You know, once we know this, actually everything else can be derived from this. Okay, you know, there's this saying, right? You know, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So this is very true for Boolean algebra. That's it, okay? So believe it or not, okay? So this, this is all we need to know to derive everything else. Okay, but what are the other things that we can derive? Okay, so we want to derive some uh, useful theorems, right? Which is um, maybe more convenient to use. So first we have some single variable theorems. Okay. First it's called identity, right? This is also pretty intuitive, right? X and one is X. So basically one is identity element for X, regardless of the value of X, right? You know, if you end it with the one, you get the same variable. Okay. And same thing for or, right? X plus zero is X. And we have something called NAR element. This is something that we're gonna use quite often. Um, X and zero is a zero. Okay, again, regardless of the value of X. Make sense? Right? So that's where uh, basically zero is a NAR element, okay, for and. And one, okay, you look at this one, one is a NAR element for or. Okay, regardless of what is X, right? X plus one is a one. We also have something called idempotency. So this is something that we're gonna use in the next lecture a lot. You know, it's a fancy name, but really it means that X times X or X and X is X, okay? Actually, no matter how many times, right? You apply the same thing, right? You can do X and X and X and X, right? So you're gonna get the same variable. So that's why it's called idempotency. Same thing for OR gate, X plus X is also X, right? So if any of this is not that intuitive, right, just let me know. Okay, you know, this is uh, the nice thing about the, the Boolean algebra is very simple. Okay. And we also have involution, right? This basically says that if you negate it twice, if you invert it twice, it's canceled out. That's it, right? Involution, the T4. And we have complements. Um, this is also about cancellation to some extent, right? X and X prime or X and X naught, we get a zero, right? So this is sort of like a contradiction, right? You know, we cannot have both X and X prime being true. So that's why we have a zero. And for the, you know, this uh, dual theorem, X plus X naught is a one, right? Because, you know, one of them will be one. So if you look at the, this NAR element theorem, so, you know, the op obviously the obvious one. Okay, so um, these are the, the simple, right? The simple theorems that involves only a single variable and we can actually prove them by perfect induction. So what I mean by this, this is actually, again, a fancy name, but really you know, this is sort of a brute force method where we just enumerate all the inputs, right? And then check the outputs. So let's just do for some of the theorems quickly. 
Okay, you know, we have uh, more interesting things to discuss. Okay, let's look at this, right? So what's the name of this theorem again? Anyone remembers? The fancy one, T3. Remember the name? This is an interesting name. Impotency. Idempotency, very good, right? Idempotency, right? So the, the way to prove it, prove, it, prove it is, you know, we just check, right? We can just enumerate the input combinations, right? When x is zero, what is the output? And when x is one, what is the output? That's it, okay? Right, same thing for the, the do, right? So the T3 prime is the do theorem, right? For all gate. Also, this is useful, right? This is useful to know, right? Idempotency. And uh, you know you guys can prove the same thing, right? For what is T five? What is the the name of T five? Complements, right? Very good, right? You know actually in the exam, uh, most likely I'm not gonna if I ask you guys to prove certain things, I'm not gonna ask you guys to remember the name of theorems. But still, the the reason I'm, I'm asking you is because you know use knowing the name will sort of give you the intuition, right? In some cases, the the name is pretty telling. Right, so you know we can easily prove this, right? I'm not gonna I'll bore you guys with this, right? You just enumerate, uh, you can easily find out this is also very intuitive. So let's look at some of the uh, more interesting theorems. So that involves more than one variables. So let's do look at the, the two variable case. Okay, first one, commutativity, right? Something that you guys know very well, right? Okay, also Boolean algebra satisfies uh, associativity. Again, you know, we have seen this a lot, right? In high school algebra, right? In uh, many kind of other algebra. So Boolean algebra has the, the same, same theorem, same, same property. And we have a uh, distributivity, right? So actually, uh, and can distribute over all, and or can distribute over and. Okay. So all of these six theorems, uh, which one looks unfamiliar? So which one does not work for integer, let's say, or for real values? T8, T8 prime, very good. Okay. So actually, uh, you look at the other five, right? So they also work for the algebra that you're familiar with. But look at, this is actually a nice thing about Boolean algebra, right? It actually has a symmetry. Okay. Even for this uh, distribut uh, distributivity, this one is symmetric. This has a duality form. Uh, you guys can convince yourself, right? You know, uh, indeed, you can easily plug in some number, right? So where uh, you can plug in some integer number and T8 prime will fail, right? For integer domain, but for binary domain, this is gonna work. Okay, so these are the, uh, right, some of the, the common right, theorems that you guys are familiar with. So here are a few other less common ones. First one is called covering. Okay, this is T9. Okay, we're gonna prove one of this. Okay, just look at this quickly. Um, you, know, you may or may not get intuition, which is fine, right? First one is T uh, covering. This basically says, you know, Y is covered. But if you look at the right-hand side, right? We only have an X, but if you like, look at left-hand side, so Y is there, right? But somehow in this case, Y is useless, right? It's already covered. Okay, so that's why it's called covering. And T10 and T10 prime is very important, especially T10. So this is something that we're gonna use a lot. Next lecture, it's called combining, right? So again, it's really about cancel things out, right? Hopefully you guys now see the pattern, right? So these ones are really about, you know, simplification, right? You know, we are building circuits, right? We care about the cost. So uh, you can probably imagine that, you know, all these variables, right? All these operators, right? All these gates will cost additional, right? Uh, you know, either air silicon area or delay, right, timing. So that's where we actually want to simplify as much as we can later on, okay? Uh, if you look at these theorems, that's how help us simplify, right? Okay, so we'll, how do we prove this? This is a pretty straightforward to prove, right? Any theorem, can we use a, a previous theorem to prove this? Any theorem? You could use the distributive theorem and also the complement theorem. Very good. Yeah, we can distribute and then do complements, right? You guys should check. Okay, let's just move on. And there's something called consensus. 
Okay, so you know this is uh, slightly uh, slightly more convoluted, right? Um, but this is something that you guys will know pretty soon. So if you look at the right hand side, okay, this is also much simpler than the the left hand side, right? Okay, actually the right hand side is called a, a MUX or multiplexer. This is something that we are going to introduce in the combinational logic log lecture. Uh, one way to prove this is, um, you know, we can, you know, in many cases, uh, you know, we can do enumeration, right? But with three variables, right? Maybe this is a little bit labor intensive, right? If you just enumerate everything. But maybe in this case, let's just enumerate a little bit, right? Let's enumerate on X. How about that? Okay. So if X is one, okay, let's try to prove T11, right? If X is one, Let's look at the right-hand side first. What is the right-hand side when x is one? Right. It's y, right? One times y plus zero times z, right? Is that right? What is this? What is this? Just y, right? So which, which theorem? There's a name for this theorem, right? Right, someone mentioned NAR, close, right, identity, right? So basically this one is just Y, right? Because this thing is just zero, right? Using the NAR element theorem, okay? This is just Y, is it clear, right? And then let's just look at the, the left-hand side, right over here. So what do we get? We get, also y, right? Right, and this one is gone, right? So left-hand side really is y plus y times z. Right, so, you know, on the left-hand side, we have this thing, on the right hand side, we have this thing, right? Now the question really is, right, let's go over here. So it's y plus y and z, the same with y. Yes or no? Yes. Which theorem? The covering. Covering, right? Not just use covering, right, over here. Right, so this is really just the y. That's it. Okay. Great. Uh, any questions about this? If not, let's move on. Let's try to prove. Um, let's pick one theorem to prove. Let's prove this one. So, you know, we just use covering, right? So, we just use a T9 prime covering. Uh, one thing I want to quickly mention is uh, later on, you know, uh, be careful when you read the question, right? In, in homework or exam, I may ask you to prove using perfect induction. That's where you enumerate, right? You can enumerate. Or may ask you to prove it algebraically. What does this mean? It means that I want you guys to use the theorems. You are only allowed to use theorems. Okay? Basically, you only manipulate this uh, you know, expression symbolically using the theorems that you know. All right, so let's look at how do we prove this one. Okay, so first, okay. you know, we, we actually, in this case, this is just one proof, okay? This is just a one way to prove it. You know, if you guys have other ideas, right, feel free to let me know. So first, you know, we expand x, right, x into this form. Okay, makes sense, right? This is just a, you know, we introduce some uh, redundancy sort of, uh, you know, intentionally, right? This is using identity. And then hopefully things become really clear, right? We just have to use the, this uh, distributivity, that's it. And then we distribute, right? So then we get a form like this. And the rest is 
pretty much really obvious. Really, the first step is uh, you know the, the trick, right? So we expand x, and then we distribute. Then one plus y becomes just one, and we use identity again. So that's how we can prove it. Right, so this is how we prove covering. And you guys probably should also try to prove this thing. I think this is just a one, no, one homework for you guys. Uh, I cannot go back to my stuff. This one, right? Maybe you guys should try to prove consensus, right? Energy breakly instead of using an matrix. Something to, you know, to think about. All right. Any questions about this line? Um, right, so yeah, Peter just men mentioned, right? Peter is one of our TAs. Uh, okay, you know, we will exercise this a lot, right? So we may also ask you to prove things like this in Perlim as well. Okay, uh, one last year. So before we end this lecture, right, you can probably tell the importance of this theorem, right? This one, this guy, this theorem has a name. Okay? It's called the Morgan theorem. This is named after another British mathematician, okay, D. Morgan. So here's the form of the theorem. Um, we have a T12 and T12 prime. Again, this comes in pairs, right? Uh, we have the principal duality. So what this one says is basically, you know, the, the negation of a product term, right? If you look at T12, the negation or inversion of the product term is the same, okay? With the sum of, you know, the individual terms or individual variables being negated. Right? You can see this, uh, you know, you can sort of see the, the duality, right? in this uh, theorem itself, right? Okay, so this is the T12 and uh, T12 prime. Prime is pretty much, uh, you know, the very similar, right? You know, it's really about uh, negating uh, a sum term. When we negate a sum term, we get uh, a product term. But in this product, right, so each individual operand is the, the negative literal. Okay, so this is something that we're gonna use a lot right? uh, later on, right, in some of the lectures. Again, this one comes, comes with a name. Right, so how to prove this? You know, again, uh, we can just go after the, the brute force way, right? Um, you know, we can just enumerate everything and it's gonna come out the same, right? In this three variable case, right? Any other suggestions? So, any other, I'm not, a, I'm not gonna give away the, the answer, right? So, but before we conclude, any other suggestion, any other intuition, why this is true? And this, this thing sounds a little bit complicated, appears a little bit complicated, right? Well, for T12, because you only need one element to make the inner parentheses zero. Um, for right. like, and then for the or part, you only need one element to make the whole thing one. So you can right, very good. It back. Right, very good. Right. right, you know, we can just, although like this thing, right, has uh, many variables, right? But, but really, uh, if you just focus on one of them, right, for example, on this one, Okay, if you make it one, the whole thing, right, on the left becomes zero, right? Okay, make sense, right? First, uh, before the negation, right, the whole thing becomes one, using what, using which zero? If this is a one, the whole thing, right, inside the parentheses becomes one. Using which theorem? This is really the same with this, right? Right? 
and we are saying that we make this guy one, then we can just treat the entire thing. Let's just rename it as y. Okay, we don't care about in how many terms we have, right? If you just rename everything as y, hopefully you guys you know, see that this is indeed a null element theorem. So this is uh, you know, one important thing about one important property of OR gate and gate, right? This NAR element is really important. So for OR gate, if one of the input is the one, you don't really care about the, the rest of the inputs. Okay, the whole thing becomes one. So then if you look at the right-hand side, right, you know, we just make X1 one, then X1 prime becomes zero, right? Then again, using the NAR element theorem, Right. The rest of this is, you know, basically not important at all. Right? We don't care about the, the value of x2, x3, x4, xn. Right? The entire thing will become a zero. Okay. Right. Now, of course, this is not really a formal proof. Right? You know, we can actually formalize this uh, using the, the real induction, using some mathematical proof. We can you know, try to first prove that this is indeed true for x1 and x2, and then we try to expand the case. We can generalize it to n variables. All right, okay, so this is uh, De Morgan, okay, and this pretty much that's okay. So this is the, the end of lecture. Um, we're gonna talk about minimization next week, right? So make sure you guys uh, submit your quiz. So you have done that, right? Make sure you do that. And also check that uh, you know, indeed you have submitted your include your net ID. If you enter that last time, uh, you may not need to enter enter again. The browser may remember that. So make sure to double check. All right. Thank you. Okay, you're done. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.